Right. I'm here with Deb Winkus of Greater Falls Connections. Hi, Don. Uh, how are you? Uh, great. Um, enjoying the really hot summer, trying to spend a lot of time in the rivers and the ponds. Um, but I'm really excited uh, to be here today at the Rec Center with Greater Falls Connections. And you put together a nice event. Yes, um, this is our, oh, I think it's our seventh annual barbecue. We kind of um, have it at the, this is kind of the end of the year for us. And um, we're celebrating so many of our successes. We are recognizing um, real, true, unsung heroes in the community. And uh, we're also, um, this is an opportunity to celebrate the amazing youth um, that we work with. And, um, and also just invite the community to come. We play games, there's youth-led games. And we've got activities at the tables for the adults um, to be able to get to know each other because we believe that the opposite of connection is, wait, <laughs> strike that. Uh, the opposite <laughs> of um, addiction is connection. It's John Ari um, said that, but, um, and we also believe that the op opposite of addiction is community. Well, I've got one of those icebreaker questions. Oh so, boy, uh -oh. So Deb, uh, why don't you answer my question? What I'm... is the weirdest food you've ever eaten? <laughs> or the weirdest uh, thing, the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Okay, I would definitely have to say squid. Squid? Yeah. It was, um, it was rough too. Um, I had a student take me out for lunch to celebrate. Um, I've been teaching English as, as a second language. And he um, took me out to lunch in, um, at a Vietnamese restaurant. And I had this bowl that was like, uh, it had squid and octopus, clams, like all, like 12 different kinds of seafood. It was like an honor to give this, you know, to provide this to somebody. And I could barely, <laughs> I had to run to the bathroom. <laughs> Oh. Anyhow, so that was that's my story, and I'm sick of it. That was going to be my next question. Did you enjoy it? Was there anything I that was really not, enjoyable? I did not. I did not. You're a brave woman, like, Deb. I couldn't. I couldn't. I couldn't. I, I, I didn't get sick or anything like that. I just couldn't swallow it. Um, so I just, um, as my eyes were watering, <laughs> I excused myself and um, went and got rid of it. And you didn't hurt anybody's feelings. I did, that was the whole thing. Like I pretended I had swallowed it, um, and uh, and was very quiet. And oh, this is, mm -hmm. <laughs> you had to be there. Well, did you get did you get the turnout that you were expecting for this event? Yeah, this is great. I mean, despite the fact that um, there is um, there are clouds in the sky and there is a threat of thunderstorms, this is pretty amazing. I mean, there are so many families here, so many kiddos. And um, community members, it's pretty exciting. And youth, lots of youth. Now, what do you what do you hope to accomplish in the next year? Uh, the next year, well, we've got a lot of really um, exciting new things like coming up. Um, we're of course going to be continuing our um, focus on um, preventing opioid um, prescription abuse and um, prescription abuse. And um, so we've um, strengthened our partnership with Turning Point, um, and they're going to really be bringing a lot more. Um, recovery resources here um, to the Bells Falls area. Um, Mike so Johnson. Very excited about that. Mike Johnson. From Great guy. Point. Yep. And also, we're going to be um, partnering um, more closely with the schools. Um, we're going to be bringing um, a um, developmental assets um, curriculum um, and training for teachers that um, have the time and um, can do that. So that's really exciting, deepening the collaboration with the schools. Uh, we also are going to be working a little bit more closely with the restorative justice um, centers. One thing our youth have been doing that's been just, um, people have seen is very, um, a beautiful way to break down barriers and bring, bring people together is they've been holding community circles. Um, where you basically get everybody who is interested in participating from the community, very diverse backgrounds, very um, different sto stories, and you get together and have conversations and you share your experiences. And what that does, it helps us to be more connected, to judge each other less, to be more accepting, and to create more of a healing community. So we're going to be doing more of the community circles um, in the upcoming year. So it sounds like that's kind of like an over Overarching kind of goal or principle yes. is, is connection. Yes. It's just, it's something big that you're working on. Yes. As the the organization's working on. This yes. Connection. Yes. Oh, terrific. 
Yeah, so we're excited and looking forward to the, um, the upcoming year. And we also are um, always looking for volunteers. If you want to get involved, we have many different ways for, for you to do so. And also, if you can think of something that more that we should be doing or could be doing, we would love to hear from you. Perhaps you might want to start a support group or... I know we actually had someone come in the office today who said, hey, you know, my kid's really struggling with anxiety. And we know that's a risk factor for future substance use. And this um, community member wants to start doing a podcast and radio station, connecting with other parents, sharing stories over the radio, W-O-O-L. So that's like a really great example of how whatever you think might help come to us and we'll help make the connections and support you in making it happen. If you think it's something that's going to help heal this community and bring it back together, um, we'd like to have it. Support the youth. <laughs> so I'm here with Mike Malik, a former winner of the Ace Award. And uh, how did you feel when you got well? A when you got nominated for the Ace Award last year? Uh, I, yeah, I was I was grateful. You know, I mean, I I, I don't think I uh, am all that remarkable. You know what I mean? I do my job, and uh, I think Bell's Falls is a good community. Like a lot of communities, it has its struggles, and uh, right. So. I was grateful, but not so sure I, you know, I'm anything special, you know what I mean? Just well, they, th obviously they, the committee thought you yeah, were special. Yeah, that was nice of them, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, because you, you know, we see you around town, you know, your positive influence, you know, by doing the work that you're doing, which um, yeah. is working with, you know, what is it, the Community Justice Center? Right, it's the Community Justice Center, and I work with, um, Mostly uh, people that have been incarcerated for a, over a year, typically. So there's an adjustment period when they get out, and that's so I help them if they want me to help them. So some of them want me to help them for a little while, and I just kind of like back out when I see that I'm not really, you don't really want me prying around. You know, it's kind of like a voluntary. Right. Although the probation, the, the probation officers may refer me directly to somebody, in which case the probation officer expects them to work with me. So that's a little different. Right. Now, what percentage of, of people are accepting your help? Oh, probably 70%. Probably. Oh, that's 75. good. Yeah, it's pretty that's good. good. It may only be for a short time. Well, it's always good because, I mean, if you're reaching out, it's similar with my work where, you know, you're reaching out to these people, you're there if they want you. You know, for the most part, my you know my program is voluntary. So, hey, I'll work with you if you want, and if you don't, and you don't show up, you don't give me, don't call me. That's kind of <laughs> yeah, that's kind of how it works. You know? Yeah, and then uh, I'll be assertive if they get if, if they get rearrested or something, and uh, then I'll find out what's going on and, and be there again for the next time they come back. And so sometimes they get two or three chances as they go back and forth. Right. Well, and you've done a lot of work. I know you've worked with youth. Oh, yeah. I'm, I've worked at youth services. I've I worked as a probation officer. i worked for ACRS. And I ran the wastewater plant here for 16 years. So, I mean, I've been in the community for a long time. In a, in a bunch of different aspects, and I, too. And I walk all the time. So I see everybody because I'm walking my dogs all the time. So people don't recognize me without my dogs. Right. <laughs> Hey, I know you were going to start up uh, the men's yoga. Did that, did yeah, that go well, anywhere? we still got a little bit of that. Well, we don't right now, but for a while, the guys at Rise came. But I'm looking, we're going to see where that goes in the future. Yeah. It was uh, more or less a mandatory meeting then for them for a while, and that was fine, but I, I told Rise that I really want to have this thing develop on a different level, so we, we haven't done it yet. Now, what do you see, like, you know, is it, what do you see is like a real need for this community right now? What purpose, do you see as like purpose, a purpose for everybody? That's what people, and that's a universal need. And I think that that's a, the root of a lot of problems is people who don't feel like they have a purpose. Mm -hmm. So you think there's a way of like, you know, creating something like that in the community where people would have a purpose outside of, you know? Yeah, I do. Of course, I also believe in, uh, somehow government funded jobs for, for folks that are having difficulty. You know, but that's, you know, that's just my own belief. Right. But it can happen at the grassroots level too. Whereas where local employers feel compelled to 
to hire struggling people because they're doing well, perhaps. So hey, hire somebody that isn't. Right. And be patient and, and ask for help with them. Right. So that's that's one of our goals at the Justice Center. That's a little bit. It's a little bit of what I do. Though I've kind of I've transferred down to Brattleboro. So right. Right. I'm not working in Bellas Falls right. as much. Yeah. I haven't seen you around much. Hi. We're good to go? Yep. Well, hi. I'm here with Scott from Greater Falls Connections. And, um, yeah, so you're here at the event. Yeah. We were just talking about promoting, promoting all the good stuff that the Greater Falls Connections does. I'm an outgoing board member. And Scott, what's, what's your role? I'm a program specialist, which kind of means I do a bunch of different things all at the same time. But um, I, I do the media outreach. I I do the um, website, I do the tobacco prevention, lots of different things. Cool. And um, the barbecue is one of the fun things we do around here every year. Great. And the great thing about the barbecue is that we have the Ace Award announcement tonight. Which right. is still a secret, no one knows who won yet. Could be Joey. I don't think he was nominated, <laughs> but that would be a good idea for a nomination for next year. That would be fun. You should put his name in for next year. Maybe he'll win. He does do a lot for this community. Right. But yes, yeah, the award for the unsung hero of the community. Nice. I'm excited to see who wins. Who was last year's winner? Last year's was Gina DeCampo. She is right oh, she's here somewhere. She's somewhere here. I saw her. And then the year before that, did, did, did Mike get it one year? Uh, Mike Malik won it one year, yeah. And uh, Christine Bullard has won it. Uh, Robert Turnus has won it. Oh, good choice. Um, Sam from the library has won it. And another good choice. Other Sam Fletcher from Texas River also won it. Um, oh, Ryan Stooley from the rec center here. Right. That's also been a former winner. So yeah, it's a, it's a good list of people who've done a lot for Bellas Falls. Right. Rockingham. Are you afraid you're going to run out of candidates? No, we had eight nominations this year. Well, that's so great. We're definitely not going to run out. So we'll still have seven left over for next year, right? It is. <laughs> that's very cool. So yeah, we're not going to run out anytime soon, especially with so many people doing it. Yeah. There's a lot. We've got good people in the community. This is a great chance to celebrate. Hey, did you help organize this event? The barbecue? Yeah, every year, uh, myself, Deb, and Laura you know, get together. The, the kids help out from the uh, Friends for Change group. And we also get you know, our board members and other volunteers. It's organized. Very cool. Now, are, there, are, there, you're, are you a vegetarian? I, I'm vegan, actually. You're vegan? Yeah. Did, now, did you find like options, like vegan options for people to eat? Yeah, so we've got, the, they're called Bubba Burgers. They make a, uh, a vegan version of their Bubba Burgers. Oh, nice. And uh, there's uh, veggie dogs, hot dogs as well. So there are options for, for us vegetarians. Very good. Yeah. Guys, it's a little like, it's a little, being a vegan, it's a little bit of, uh, a bit troubling. I'm just thinking, to have an event like this, where you're inviting people in and you're, you're having them eat food that you know is... Meat? And like, well, yeah, meat or, you know, uh, really not, not adding to their health. So it's kind of like, would it almost be equal, I mean, because you do the tobacco prevention, would it be like inviting people in to smoke cigarettes? Like giving them out to children, come on, kids! <laughs> well, we're not funded to uh, work with, uh, you know, food or diet. So it's not a big problem to me. Um, you know, we like to have healthy options too. Um, you know, we, so they're there. Somebody they're there. If people want them. Right. So we're not going to force anybody, you know, to eat vegan. Right. Of course. And I'm the only one that's like that out of the three employees. So. Right. Um, and I didn't know, that wasn't, well. I was just wondering, like, in general, not, I'm not picking oh, yeah. the group right now. So wanted, usually when we have a coalition meeting, we try to have, you know, salad and a lot of really healthy things. So people can choose from, right. uh, you know, different wraps and rice dishes and pasta. So it's not, it's not always barbecue. Right. So this is a once a year thing. So yeah. this is a special treat. Well, it could be. <laughs> it meets a treat, right? <laughs> oh. Hopefully people come and eat and enjoy the food and feel like it's a treat. Yeah, I hope they have that, that feeling when they walk away. Well, it's a party and we all get to get together. And that's one of the things, you know? Yeah. And that's the biggest thing for our organization, is bringing people together. Right. Who might not otherwise be in the same room together or be in the same space together. 
having a, it's a really beautiful time together. Yeah. Enjoy it. So. Now, do you have to do a lot of promotion to get this many people? Because usually this is a pretty well attended event. Yeah, we start promoting it usually maybe three or four weeks beforehand. We'll put a press release in the paper to let everybody know. Um, we put it all over Facebook. I put it on the different groups all through Bell Falls, all nice. through the area. And then we make posters and flyers and plaster those out. So, and Deb does a great job getting the word out. She does. I'm trying to think how I heard. I think from, from email. Or... Yeah, and this morning, uh, Dan from our youth group, he was sending out messages all over Facebook, reminding people to come today. Oh, way to go. He does a lot. Maybe yeah. he'll win the award. He's a potential candidate for next year, definitely. That's so great. if you're out there and you want to nominate somebody for next year, look for the Ace Award on our Facebook page. Yeah. And you can nominate Dan. That's great. Or Don. Am I the only, Joey behind the camera. Am I the only board member that's here, or former board member? Um, Susan is a former board member from before she was. you were a board member. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think. I don't think anyone else is a board member right now. Uh, so I'm assuming one or two. Oh no, you know who? Is a brand new board member? I forgot the man's name. He's talking to Mike. Jonathan Connor, yeah. Yes. He's one of us talking to Mike. So yeah, he's a board member. So we got one. So we got two former board members and this one current. Yeah. Was it like but there should be more coming. Could be the weather, too. Yeah. The weather's not predicted overcast. to be very good right now. So. Were weather, you worried? The weather's fine. Yeah, we've been watching the weather every few hours the last couple of days. Because the last, the original date for this got washed out. Yeah. Because it just absolutely poured with thunder and lightning the day that we had the schedule for originally. So I kind of figured, I thought, boy, you'd be reluctant to cancel. Yeah, again, you know? after already rescheduling once. And look how beautiful it is compared to that day. <laughs> right? So this is fine. A little, a little bit of cloudiness is not going to stop us from having a great barbecue. But you also, you mentioned you do like the tobacco grant, right? Yeah. Now, are you worried that at some point the tobacco numbers are going to drop so low that you're not going to have a job? Uh, <laughs> yes, I'll happily retire when that happens. Yes, that, that's the goal. And is, are, they, are they going down? I mean, on my not that quickly. They're, they're going down. Yeah. There's still about 18, between 17 and 18 percent of the non smokers. Adult, adult, adult. Wow, so that's almost one in five. Almost, yeah. It's still a good number. Do you think it's the price? The price of cigarettes is one of the inhibiting factors? Studies have shown that that you know, reduces the number of people that smoke, but it's not dramatic. Um, there's a lot of social factors, and just people are more aware of right. the health concerns. People want to live longer, so you know, fewer people smoke. Yeah.